Hello, greetings, Sandy Bonani, Konishwa. My name is Sandy Lemshengu from an organization called Ubuntu Future 108 Pty. Um, we've got a special program that we have in, in honoring the memory and the contributions of the rickshaw. And it is a Japanese origin. A rickshaw in 2024 marks 132 years in existence. Welcome to the partnership presentation of the Rickshaw Project. One of the proposed partners include the Municipality of Eteguini, Deben, the KwaZulu Natal Government leadership. We also want to have partnership with the people of Japan, the Japanese Embassy, and to celebrate this long relationship that has existed since 1892. The relationship between KwaZulu Natal is by far the longest cultural relationship that has existed, which has had amazing impact uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the country of South Africa and in, in KwaZulu Natal and Deben respectively. And so we saw, we saw this as, a, as an opportunity to then further inspire relationships and friendships between the country of Japan and the country of South Africa, Deben. So this in a way will obviously trigger more relationships because this was inorganic, it was unplanned and yet remains one of the most successful heritage exchange initiative that has existed. And we hope that it will inspire and trigger more relationships going forward. And so our plan therefore was that we would look at various events which will honor the relationships that, has, that have existed through cultural exchange, student exchange, and, and a whole lot of other events which are planned to look at the hosting of the uh, celebrating the, the history which has contributed. So Japan becomes an inspiration for the whole of Riksha. And the, the, the story of the Riksha really starts in around 1892 where the sugar magnate Sir Marshall Campbell who had traveled in Asia and seen the impact of the rickshaw uh, in Japan the rickshaw is called Jin Rickshaw as we shall see shortly and so it was an adopted uh, or rather borrowed from Japan and has contributed massively in South Africa and Kwasu Natal and hence we've, we've thought of uh, putting a program together to honor the original invention, the concept itself, and to see how it could further inspire our relationships going forward. And so we shall present to you a full brief, brief history. And through this history that we are presenting, we are hoping that the Japanese ministers, uh, jointly with the South African ministers of transport and tourism and the mayors, would then find lecture lecture series which will form or inspire the tribute. We are also hoping that the city of Deben, which is very active uh, under, the, under the leadership of Mr. Eric Applegreen, will be more inspired to look at the, the, the speeding of finding cities in, 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 in KZN, in Deben, that will become a sister city because through the sister city project, uh, naturally, uh, initiatives like this would, would then prosper and find more home in terms of advancing their interest. So the existence of the sister city program, adopting the city from Japan will obviously trigger and inspire the project to go even, even faster. And so through these initiatives, we are hoping to then cement relationships between the two countries and to find commonalities among the cities. Uh, symbolically, the Japan and South Africa and KwaZulu Natal, Deben, seems to be tied by a, a very symbolic or rather poetic mode, which is transport tires vehicle. Transport 
Tyre's vehicle is the symbolic uh, 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 um, uh, cement which is molding these two countries. For example, rickshaw is a vehicle which was born from Japan and rickshaw is also found its way into Deben as we commemorate it today. Toyota is also of Japan. In Deben, we, in Deben, we have the biggest Toyota plant in the whole of South Africa and Africa, which is, 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 is uh, hosted in Deben. Sumitomo, the, the, tire, the Japanese tire company, is also headquartered in KwaZulu-Natal. So you've got these three uh, symbolic transport modes that are presently uh, tying the relationship between Japan and, and Deben. And so we are hoping to use this, these, uh, these uh, symbolisms as a benchmark to further create a road in which uh, there will be more relationships that will be, well, that, that will be uh, enjoyed between these two countries. We are also looking at ways of improving the rickshaw. For example, I saw that uh, the Japanese rickshaw were in like, like few a few months ago in 2023 are being driven by women this is an a, a, an amazing legacy because uh, traditionally we think of men who are driving rickshaws but also the J japanese have further improved the rickshaw where the rickshaws are now uh, doubling up not only as a, a tourism but also they are being trained rather sorry they are being trained as tourist guides and so the rickshaws have improved and we are hoping that we could also acquire the the latest form of rickshaw which has been engineered through this partnership we we'll hope to extend the rickshaw foundations and to see how they could further uh, uh, be improved we are also looking at, we've engaged with the University of Kwazulu Natal to look at the, the, the possibility of adopting a city in Japan or a university rather where they could start collaborating, not, not, not limited to the rickshaw or, or hydraulics, but also to look at other forms of uh, collaboration with the Japanese in terms of the student exchange, cultural exchange and heritage exchange. So those were the, the initial uh, uh, relationship that we wanted to trigger using the, the rickshaw, the rickshaw, the Toyota benchmark. We also wanted to engage Toyota so that they formally assist in terms of supporting the initiative, being considering that they are of Japan and that the, their existence will obviously assist in, in assisting either the initiative. And so through these notes that we shall read, we hope they will form and give a rough picture of uh, the origin of rickshaw and how it all started. And so we have the, the, the notes which we shall read and we hope it will give some level of background. And uh, obviously through these notes, we will then form a lecture series which will be read by the ministers based on the history. So. The, the, the history as we shall so begins in this way. So I will be a minister, Smart Ngonyama. I will be the mayor. I will be so this is what we thought we would then use this note to to, 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 to develop based on this research. So the story goes that um, when in nineteen eighty two um, the Natal sugar magnate Marshall Campbell negotiated the purchase of rickshaws which he had seen in Asia. And so this had anticipated this mode of transport would become inextricably part of Deben's social history for almost century and three decades later. The rickshaws were immediately hired when they began out to African people. Initially on a daily basis, the charges between two and three dollars. From onset, it seemed that the rickshaw became highly visible feature of Deben's transport system, being well suited to all the growing bustling port. The vehicles were well patronized, their convenience being quickly appreciated. The enormous popularity of the rickshaw was reflected in the massive growth in the number of these vehicles in Deben Road. Thanks to Japan, the inspiration which came from Japan, 
the word rickshaw in in fact in japan is pronounced jin rickshaw the word jin meaning riki which is the power and the word sha means carriage so essentially you have this origin a japanese origin which is a, a essentially a human pulled vehicle the enormous popularity of the rickshaw was reflected um, on on the on the roads of deben despite competition from the other forms of transport in the early 1890s uh, and, and 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 to later periods the trams and the cabs were were also part of the the series in part the growth must have been seen in the context of improvement of the port and the harbor facilities emergence in deben the premier commercial link with the interior in 1899 it was estimated that approximately 3400 persons each spend an average of 9 dollars daily on rickshaw travel during that year some 11445 men registered as rickshaw pullers and about 740 rickshaws were in daily use by 1900 the average monthly registration of pullers rose to 1442 and in the number of licensed rickshaws reached 1551 in 1902 which appeared to have been a boom year an astonishing 2170 rickshaws thronged the street in all of deben 24000 men registered as pullers the rickshaw became a familiar part of the landscape of deben streets thanks to the japan's origin until 1930s the monthly registration of rickshaw fluctuated between 750 and 990 in 1901 There were 1970 rickshaws. In 94, 1914 there were 1055 rickshaws. In 1920 there were 1429 rickshaws. In 1934 there were 1899 rickshaws. In 1941 the number declined to about 796. So we've seen the steady decline of the numbers of the rickshaw throughout the ages. In part, that growth must be seen in context of the improvement of the ports as Ella indicated. And so the rise and rise of rickshaw and but also it became very popular form of a tourist attraction. By 1900 the number it also uh, seen a uh, various changes uh, that it came into the into the industry until 1930 the monthly registration fluctuated between 7 750 and 1999 the number of, of rickshaws varied between 907 and 1931 there was something of a decrease over the decades uh, that followed later the yearly average of rickshaws standing at 8835 while the average monthly registration of pullers seemed to have hovered around 700 during the 1960s the numbers declined steadily until 1970 there were about 186 vehicles of the rickshaw and 186 rickshaw pullers on the street by the early 1990s a mere handful of rickshaws also further declined and it would only be found uh, congregated in a single rank along the beach front remnants of the one vital mode of transport the rickshaw pull the, the rickshaw pulling was in fact a unique operation uh, the the pullers occupied a anomalous position within the deben labor, ma- labor market not only being employed by either the rickshaw owner or the corporation undoubtedly one of the main uh, reasons for the popularity of pulling was that the puller became a freelance uh, operator after obtaining its puller's license moreover pulling 
offered certain advantages over other forms of labor in Durban. In particular, it afforded greater opportunities for earning money through individual effort. It seemed to, during those some periods at least, Africans found pulling a remunerative occupation. But it must be also be stressed that the nature of pulling was also seen as, as hazardous work, especially when the, there was a ri arrival of new transport modes. The marginal, uh, also there were various tensions within the class acts and the, the, the position of the, the, the class structure is so far as they may arguably be located within pretty uh, bulk news and, 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 and rendered them vulnerable uh, to exploitation by the rickshaw owners, hence the maximizing profits and subject controls imposed by the corporation. The scale of the rickshaw operation pointed to the profitability of the rickshaw owning business. Deben Limited, the Patent Rickshaw Limited were also the two largest companies. The former was registered in 1910 with a nominal capital of 5,000 pounds. By 1914, the company asset stood at 20,000 pounds. A. O. Ball, the last manager of the Patent Rickshaws Limited Company from 1946 to 1966 when it was sold, reports that his father, John Ball, who founded the company, always maintained that in their heyday, the rickshaw educated his children. Until the implementation of Group Areas Act in Deben, owners were obliged to provide adequate and suitable accommodation for both the puller and his hired vehicle. The accommodation did little to promote some of the benefits. Initially, uh, pullers were housed in premises near private dwellings, often the rickshaw sheds, while there were reports of some providing fairly good and clean accommodation. Regular inspections revealed that there were sheds um, they, they were afforded do, they did afford some form of accommodation but with, with various challenges. The 1945 district commanded that the found premises of patent rickshaws limited pages from Devon rickshaws in 1942 deplorable state but the conditions were not uh, as, as good. However, they were improved later on and as also the bylaws were affected. The company had employed situations to, to find ways of giving uh, rickshaws a, a, a sense of a good uh, space that was, respect, that was in good condition. The increase of fares became another big subject. As long as the pullers hired vehicles from the companies, they were vulnerable to decisions in favor of increased hiring fees. When, for example, on 1918, on April 15, the largest rickshaw company, Deben Rickshaw Limited, decided, in view of higher overheads, to raise its hiring fee from 10 shillings to 12 shillings weekly. It did not anticipate that the pullers would strike. The earnings capacity threatened at the time of the rising cost, given that the basic rickshaw fees un remained unchanged at $3 per half time and, and for the six day per mile and not otherwise specified. The rickshaw were successful on the occasion due to the role they played in Deben transport system. However, the motorization traffic had obvious repercussions for their earnings. The arrival of the motorized transport posed a great threat to the rickshaw uh, vehicles. And so, but also what the rickshaw had brought was a, 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 pre, a preview of the man versus machine and how it could up be challenged in, 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 in times today. Subsequent protests and strikes in favor of reduced hiring costs during the next few decades founded in the wake of the opposition of the rickshaw companies for the corporation no longer had any incentive to support the pullers demanded the pressure of the own owners in the case in 1918. Pullers' energy were not only directed against exploitation of the hands of the owners, they were also engaged in continuous struggle against controls deemed seemed to the smooth functioning of the Devon transport and the traffic system. Once we introduced, obvious priority was their integration into Devon's transport system. Between 1894 and 1907, 
a series of bylaws was passed setting the parameters within the rickshaw business operated largely unchanged until 1960s in the past the rickshaws had freedom of movement they thronged the entire city all of the city without any restrictions however there the, the, the were changes later police records during the first decade of the so introduction of the rickshaws testify uh, to a struggle of rickshaws to the rules of the road the constraint and given rapid turnover rickshaw men on high incidents and also they were involving rickshaws so they were seen as hazards as time went on however all decisions all decisions had to be made in relation to various factors the different departments of the corporation in deben were not only united for example the town clerk the police did not always find a sympathetic ear to the office of the town clerk moreover any attempt to resolve the particular problem or set problems was circumscribed by existing bylaws while some of these <coughs> could be were easily altered others problematic they clashed with the vessel's interest including the rickshaw owners and the public of deben and in the corporation itself the success operation for the corporation which reaped financial benefits from licensing fees without capital investment in the venture from 1950s onwards deben tourist trade became yet another factor to consider for by far the rickshaws had become a popular tourist attraction the corporation actions can therefore be elucidated within the context and scale of the operation given deben's uh, transport needs by 1909 apart from the appearance of the pony rickshaw the traffic situation has been worsened by the increase of the number of cars and motorcycles in 1919 The number of vehicles excluding rickshaws, bicycles, railways, vehicles exceeded 100. In the same year, there were 2900 horse-drawn vehicles in Deben. The slow rickshaw were now considered a traffic hazard. The source of great of greatest irritation however was tended to of pullers uh, to roam in 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 in, in the search of passengers. The designation of various cited rickshaw stands suitably extended on altered the catered for the changing needs and injunctions against toting were specifically designed to meet the tendency but given the pullers interest in maximizing their 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 takings and competition context a low fare structure it would hardly have been otherwise while on the occasion of the corporation recognized that over trading uh, might exist It was insensitive for the law affairs as in 1919 also the same year the municipal native affairs department received a delegation of some 25 pullers the spokesman for the pullers upega upega pezulu explained that rather than strike they were decided to enlist the department's aid in raising a basic minimum tariff to $6 J.S. Ma- uh, Mawik, the manager at the municipal uh, offices, NAD, advised against the increase, arguing that the earnings of pullers in excess of those of any other native in the, in, in, in the system. In 1912, the Secretary of the Native Affairs proposed the abolition of the response to the labor uh, needs from the sugar growers. The, the sugar growers were in desperate need of labors and so they thought that they could use the rickshaw pullers and 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 use them in the in the in the new uh, at demands however the corporation response was was an equivocal it had no intention of limiting number of stage as it would have affected um, the reverse adversary pressure to limit the number of pullers built again in 1917 in response of the labor shortage whereupon rickshaw owners reacted objecting on the grounds of restriction of trade Mawik who had initiated the proposal was, was also the driving force between another two 
abortive schemes aimed at limiting the number of pullers. By 1930, the traffic situation in Deben had reached something of a crisis with some 9,431 motor vehicles and 10,282 uh, horse-drawn vehicles having been licensed. Indeed, the chief constable was about to introduce the traffic light for the very first time to control the traffic in Deben. He therefore argued that it was imperative to enforce restrictions of the rickshaw pullers in the heart of the city during the lunch hour and around 5 p.m. At the same time, the pullers were faced with competition from other forms of public transport. Although they were the official, one of the early uh, people mover, uh, the rickshaw men claimed that trams were robbing them of their fares, and this was probably unfounded. For some statistics, stat statistics showed that 120 electrified trams carried some 339,000 passengers that year. The trams actually reported a deficit of 7,310 pounds in the same year and in the year 1929 to 1930. In any case, convenience for the rickshaw short course, uh, short journeys, especially in the city center, was part of this attraction. The rickshaw pullers had to compete with omnibuses, which were also responsible for the tram losses, which were first introduced in 1925 to cover routes other than the, the, the train routes. There were 16 such vehicles in the fleet by 1930 and five 191,415 passengers were carried that year. The fare, both trams and buses, stood at $2 per stage. The growing popularity of taxis, the large number of privately owned motor cars, also eroded the rickshaw uh, wide clientele. In the face of, the, of these assaults, the daily earnings still circumscribed by the original scale of the fares, which claims they were earnings, mere uh, pretense. The pullers formed themselves into a body asked by the AGW a champion to intercede on, on their behalf with local authorities. Some four months later, their grievances unaddressed. Pullers came out on a strike. Although the strike was apparently an unsuccessful culminating the return of work after 12 days, the, nim the minimum charge for rickshaw rides was subsequently raised to $6. The corporation refused to budge, however, on the question of easing restrictions placed on pulling in the center of the town, toting its soliciting continued testifying to the continuing competition within the rapidly diminishing market. Moreover, the nature of the market was altering. Rickshaws were becoming a primary, the, the poor, the, the, the other, catering for other forms of, of clientele. The, the con, um, some pullers abandoned um, the, the, the public system and in, in favor of the rides and they looked at other alternatives and thereby growing and saving the tourist market. The struggles against control and exploitation continued. In 1941, A.J. Sililo wrote to the town clerk on behalf of the combined location's native advisory boards, pointing out that while the board were opposed in principle to the kind of work done by the rickshaw men, the service of those in this terrible Africans who are in the poorest members of the community were unable to afford any other means of conveyance. In particular, the rickshaws were used extensively later by those who attended markets early in the morning. The Indian market opened at 4 a.m. and the table holders arrived therefore after um, to make preparations. Africans also relied on rickshaws as a means of conveyance to and from the trains. Other, under these circumstances, the, 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 the decision by the General Purpose Committee recommended a bylaw prohibit rickshaw for hire between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. It will cause hardship for inconvenience of many citizens in Deben. The curfew originally imposed in 1906 was never obeyed by pullers because night pullers represented an important source of income 
the corporation was unable to enforce prohibition for the force of the determined resistance. Indeed, as the city council uh, legal advisor noted that there appeared to be at least five different regulations pertaining to night pulling, and it was not clear on which of this guided an official action. On one occasion, pullers found unexpected allies when in 1941 the city council adopted a motion of pullers by plying the hire between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. A storm a protest came from the rickshaw owner supported that the puller docks, arguing that the rickshaw permitted to ply the midnight ensure that the visiting troops returning to their ships by, the, uh, by, by, by that hour. The growth continued. In 1944, there were 865 rickshaw pullers on the street, and by September 1945, there were 879 rickshaw pullers who had already been registered. The trend was attributed to the number of convoys passing through the Deben, the shortage of motor vehicles between the war areas. The, year, the, the general increase in the population, the post-war period, however, saw the reversal of the trend. By the early 1950s, there were two distinct types of rickshaws, the so-called decorative or tourist pullers rickshaw, mainly from the Zulus who came from the Nongoma district, and the passenger goods carrying a vehicle rickshaw, who were, were mainly who came from the Eastern Cape, the Pondo, the Pondo region who had been pulling the rickshaws uh, for the previous decade. Most of the Zulu of the of the rickshaws were Zulu from the Nongoma areas in the and 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 the surrounding communities. Given the almost exclusive patronage uh, of the ordinary rickshaws by the African and African markets, the high profile enjoyed the beach pullers. It was not surprising therefore that by nine fifty eight the city council could report rickshaws no longer uh, used the central street and were no longer considered to be traffic hazard. A further incentive to formalize that situation came in 1961 with the master controller for Deben traffic lights, the consequent need to traffic to move to a regular speed. The traffic advisory board in 1961 thus proposed the, 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 the prohibition of the rickshaw from the central areas and were limited mainly in the beach areas with specific uh, allowance between 7 and 5 p.m. and were confined between 1963 restrictions. The Deben Publicity Association, which was a tourism uh, agency, which was founded in 1922 for the express of advertising Deben as an attractive holiday resort, adopted the rickshaw puller as its logo in 1930. In the same year, Toki publicizing, the city featured uh, the, the rickshaw pullers. The fame of Deben rickshaw men spread considerably. At the end of 1933, a request was received from Australia in Melbourne for their 30, for, for 30 vehicle uh, rickshaw pullers to visit the city for six months in order to participate in the, in the celebration of the Victoria Centenary on the year. Having adopted the rickshaw as a Deben's distinctive advertising motive, the, De the Deben's uh, promotion agency became opponent of the number of pullers in 1941. The 1950s 
also proved to be a lucrative period for the decorative pullers by now mostly concerned and concentrated in the beach areas. Estimates of the earnings were given as four to nine pounds weekly. Their income supplemented through their participation on the annual parade organized by the DPA. This ran from Albert Park, Deben to the beach culminated a concours, the elegance featuring the representation of the cash awards and, and best dressed pullers, five and guinea prizes, most photogenic uh, puller, which also formed part of their promotion. There were the colorful dresses, the colorful regalia, the one that stood out of all, which an elaborate, especially the head dresses, which weighed up to 60 pounds. Additionally, bonuses were provided for the rickshaw as guest appearances in one of the annual fairs in, in, in the Cape Town. The, the, the encyclopedia called the Britannica referred to the rickshaw boys as Deben's tourist attraction to the outside world. They were said Sullivan patronizingly part of the Zulu tradition, thereby displaying breathtaking ignorance. Moreover, they were an integral part to the city's holiday atmosphere. Part of the merry-go-round, the circus element, the inseparable from any popular beach front, as whether pullers might be regarded as a symbol. Since it, the rickshaw's origin, the rickshaws have been true ambassadors, despite the decline, thanks to the Japanese for their original inspiration, the rickshaws have seen or rather, the rickshaws are present in most part of the global museums. They have inspired a generation with their colorful costumes. They have transported millions of millions of people as they are one of the earliest people movers of the day and contributed to an amazing heritage that we have today. Thanks to Japan and their original inspiration, we have developed an industry which has contributed massively in terms of the culture and heritage. And thanks to the Zulu men for adding a bit of unique beats and, and dresses into their rickshaw and are anonymously known and have become a symbol of a powerful, a unique tradition. In, only in, in South Africa, in Deben, would you find anywhere in the world, you will find a unique dress and regalia of the rickshaw. So through these memories that have been shared, we therefore have various events which we are planning to commemorate the existence of the rickshaw jointly with other partners who have contributed to look and honor their memory on how they changed in their existence despite the challenges, despite the decline, nonetheless they deserved to be acknowledged for their contributions. So we have various events that we have planned. One of them was to launch a book, which was simpler to do, but with various challenges. The book literally paints the picture of history, a pictorial history book, which celebrates the, 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 the history of the rickshaw through the pictures from 1892 to current times. The second thing we are putting together was an exhibition we will, which will exhibit the history through in an artistic exhibition of various pictures and displays that will tour various parts of, of, of the country and possibly the world. The third thing we are doing is we want, with the upcoming tourism uh, 2024, we wanted to have a specific, a special uh, heritage uh, of the rickshaw exhibition within the, the international uh, 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 tourism to honor the rickshaw as they mark 132 years in existence and the massive contribution they had in the rickshaw. We've said informally 2024, the year of the rickshaw. 
so we wanted them to feature in this global pavilion platform and also activate various tours honoring the existence of the 132 year history and we obviously in between have lectures which we, we have planned we had wanted to get the japanese a, a, a leadership in in the rickshaw because they have preserved their history well to learn from the japanese how they have preserved their their rickshaw heritage there is even a, a rickshaw museum in japan which is housing the first car uh, rickshaw vehicles and i guess that there is something we can learn on how we can preserve our rickshaw at the site but also the japanese have further developed vehicles so we wanted to find a synergy and collaboration with Japanese uh, uh, companies based in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa to help us join forces and, 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 and see how best we could improve the economy, the relations, and hopefully we will inspire the city to look into the specific a, a, a sister city project. Like there's a city in Japan, which is a Toyota city, and perhaps we could adopt that city because of the existence of, of the Japan and that could further trigger uh, relations and, and also look at the job creation. We also have the students, as said earlier, that we wanted to bring on board. But our, our original plan was to honor these memories, to do series le lectures and to honor the existence of the rickshaw and to share with the people of Japan through musical heritage and other forms to celebrate our joint uh, common uh, commonalities. Risha is common in Japan, originated from Japan, and we've borrowed it this side. The tire manufacturer, Toyota, these are three symbolic uh, modes of inspiration that connects us both. And we wanted to use them as a benchmark to, col to communicate and to bring, uh, inspire more friendship between the two countries. Tourism is an important matter as well and so we wanted to form this partnership and synergy between the three and to see what partnerships that can emerge further in cementing ties between the Japanese and the South Africans. Finally, we wanted to have a delegation that will travel into Japan and tourism delegation uh, from the people of the office of the mayor to have partnerships with the university students who also would obviously make it into forming a partnership centered around the vehicles of the rickshaw and seeing what other uh, relationships that can be developed further. So these are in actual part of our initiatives and we hope to get support from you. Thank you very much. My name is Sandile Mshengu. Uh, we hope to engage uh, further. Please see the details of our contact details. And as we plan, I'm sure other ideas may trigger and we can then find a way forward. Thank you very much.